Republican state lawmakers that have called it unconstitutional. Here's what Chief Pazin had to say. The red flag law uh, is something that certainly can help us. Sullivan sponsored the original bill for the state's red flag law. He says people need to know all of their options. It is important that we let you know family members know that this is something that, that, that they can do. In the past year, 113 petitions under the law were filed in Colorado. There were 10 people who were sitting around the table with their loved ones enjoying uh, the holiday season that might not have been there had these petitions not been filed. So whether people use the courts or anonymous tip lines, the message from law enforcement is clear. It's okay to trust your gut. Uh, it's better to report your concern and it turns out to be nothing than to ignore that concern. CB Cotton, Denver 7. And tonight we're getting a look at the officers and how they acted after the arrest that left a 73 year old with dementia badly hurt. An attorney for Karen Garner says this footage comes from inside Loveland's police department last June. The attorney says while officers joked and fist bumped, Garner was handcuffed in a cell just feet away. Loveland Police Department says it will not comment while an independent investigation is underway. And Garner's attorney says the family plans to release a new statement tomorrow. Colorado will soon have a bigger voice in our national politics. Our state's gaining an eighth U.S. House seat because of a surge in population, about 15 percent, in fact, in the last decade. That extra congressional seat will also give Colorado, of course, an additional vote in the presidential electoral college. It's not clear yet where that new district will be. The high cost of health care, it's a concern for families all across Colorado, and state lawmakers are trying to reach a deal to bring down those costs. Colorado Democrats plan to offer an amendment to their public health insurance option bill. It actually kills off the state-run insurance option entirely, and instead it forces insurers to offer the standardized plan developed by the state and cut insurance costs. The change comes after talks with insurers and health care groups. The Colorado Hospital Association says it is now taking a neutral stance on the bill instead of opposing it. Tonight, healthcare workers are seeing a troubling trend. People not showing up for their second dose of the coronavirus vaccine. Whether it's about convenience or simply forgetting about the appointment, providers want to make sure everybody who needs a second shot gets a second shot. And mobile clinics now are rolling out to the places where they're needed most. Barber shops, grocery stores, Taco Bells, where we know we have the hardest hit population of essential workers who oftentimes can't take work off to get vaccinated. And Thursday, Centura Health is hosting a clinic for anybody who needs that second Moderna dose, no matter where you got your first one. That's happening at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. When a chopper carrying a Flight for Life crew crashed in Frisco in July 2015, Dave Repture was burned over most of his body. Doctors put his chance of survival at just 10 percent, but Dave was determined to beat those odds. As Denver 7's Russell Haythorn reports, filmmakers are now working to spotlight this incredible story. And maybe Christine. When Mike Mazanti and Jeff Kozlowski set out to tell their next story. We were going to make a film, but we didn't know it was going to be. You're not 100 percent sure how it's going to end up. I'm going to tell you guys I'm going to give you a 10 percent chance that he'll make it. How it would end up or what kind of impact it would have, even on them. It was a tough story to tell. Everybody knew the story at Dave Repture around here. We all knew about the helicopter crash and all that. He's on the county hospital. Okay. Go talk it down. You know, that footage is, is tough to watch. They knew the tragedy involving that Flight for Life helicopter and flight nurse Dave Repture, or DREP, had a powerful message. There's love on so many levels. So naturally, they started the story with the person closest to it. It's hard for me to even put into words just how much support I had. Dave's wife, Amanda. It was humbling and I think they just told a beautiful story. That story would consume Mike for the next year of his life. It was the last thing I thought about before I went to bed and the first thing I thought about when I woke up, their story. A story he knew he had to get right in this documentary, which ultimately became about love, perseverance, and a burn victim at University of Colorado Hospital who shocked 
the world. And I knew instantly that he was back because he looked me straight in the eye. Relied on seeing Amanda every day and hearing her voice. And Dave Rupture spent 397 days in the hospital after that fateful crash in Frisco on July 3rd, 2015, a crash that killed one of his colleagues and left Dave with a 10% chance of survival. Little did the world know how much of a fighter Dave is. The best way I could do that at that time was just try to fight as hard as I could and and make the best of every situation. The worst burn victim at UC Health to ever survive. Challenging at best. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, there's, there was moments of just excruciating pain. The healthcare professionals are true angels. We are lucky enough to have, you know, not, not only each other and community around us. That is a true blessing because there's a lot of people that go through something like this alone. Oh my God. That's the essence of this documentary, Mike and Jeff ultimately Yay. captured a story about honestly love the love between them and family and friends and all of that studies show that love family love and support improve your chances of survival the deeper i went i finally got to this place where i just uncovered a lot of beauty dave and amanda now spend their days in summit county much like they did before the crash i have a motto i just you know get outside every day no matter what that dude shouldn't have survived and he's playing hockey again. There are so many people that have incredible stories to share. And for university to come to us and ask if they could tell our story and share our story was a huge honor. An honor shared by all those involved in a film now winning awards. It's wonderful to know that you spent a year making something that is impacting people in such a positive way. In Summit County. He's just a guy with an amazing heart, an amazing world to live. For Denver 7. Now, if something like that happens to me, the first thing I'm going to think about is Dave. I'm Russell Haythorn. At this point, you just sort of have to shrug and be like, yeah, I saw that coming. Rockies GM Jeff Breidich out of a job just 21 games into the season. Is it enough to turn things around for the team with the worst record in the National League? This cold front means a big change. Rain, snow, thunder, possibly severe weather for Colorado. Plus, 95 years old and full of energy. I love the people, the volunteers are my family. So simple as that. We're catching up with a Denver 7 everyday hero who has no plans to slow down anytime soon. 